Hi, and welcome to an introduction to computer networks. We've all seen networks. The definition of a network is actually quite simple and general. It's a system of interconnected things. But what does this mean in the computer context? Well, let's have a look at some other examples because you're surrounded by networks. And if I remind you of those, it'll probably help you to put computer networks in context more easily. Let's look at some other types of network. We've got the rail network, we've got the phone network, and we've also got the postal network. When we think about these, what do all of them have in common? What we are doing is sending something from one place to another. Let's look at rail. We've got stations, we've got people who want to go from one station to another. In reality, these stations are all linked together with railway tracks. So what you've got are the elements of a network joined together by links. In this case, stations and track. With phones, the exchanges are going to transport messages from one place to another. So you say hi on your phone, and now it's the message that's being transported from phone to phone, so your friend hears it on their phone. But look how similar it is to the rail network. Instead of people and trains, we're sending information as signals. And this is how we're going to start talking about computer networks. We refer to the elements in a computer network as nodes. So every computer you put into the network is a node. Connecting them are links, which we also refer to as communications media. While we might link computers directly together when they're very close to each other, often what we do is that we connect things across the internet. And when we do that, we really want to look into the internet to see how they're connected. Because the nodes in a computer network might be the computer that you use sitting at the end of a connection, or it might be specialized equipment that sits in the middle. One of the reasons that we have to think about this is that as for train and phone networks, we have to have a way of getting our message to the right destination. We have to know where to send it. So let's look at a complicated rail network. As you can see, poor Jeff down there doesn't know where to go. What do you need to know in order to tell him how to get to where he needs to go? Well, you need to know where he's going, you need to know where he's starting from, and then you have to understand enough about the network in order to be able to tell him where to change trains and how to get from one place to another. Now, the really good news is we don't actually have to do this very much in computer networks because of the specialized hardware that sits in the middle. Hopefully, most of you already know this because you've used the internet before. So you sit down with a machine and whether you're connected via Wi-Fi, which is wireless, or a cable, you can talk to the internet. But of course, this means that you've got some other device in your building or your computer's been set up to work with some other kind of wireless technology that will connect you to the internet. Just to recap, nodes include PCs and laptops, modems and printers, phones and tablets, and any special network hardware. Anything that is connected to the network is considered to be a node. But why don't we have to deal with Jeff's problem of having to work out for ourselves how to get through the network? Every computer that's connected to the network has an address and special hardware called routers can work out where to send your information based on the address that you started from and the address that you're going to. You may not have ever seen these address numbers because very fortunately for us, there's a service that allows us to use names that are easy for humans to use, which are then turned into numbers that computers can use. So let's see what the equivalent of that address number is when it's a name and that's much easier to use. So we've talked about networks generally, and we've talked about the fact that computer networks are very unsurprisingly made up of computers, but there are nodes on the edge, and then there are these special nodes in the middle that help to direct your message to the right place. So what we're going to do now is quickly look at how we would send a message from one place to another to make sure that we've got all the key concepts. So you open up your machine and you decide that you're going to write me an email saying how much you love the movie. You get my email address, you put it all together, and you press the send button. And what happens then, of course, is that message is sent to the internet. But now we've got to work out where we're going to send it to. So let's go back and look at that address. It actually needs to be sent to a machine that has that address. So that information is going to be used for routers to talk to each other, to send the email from one place to the other so that I'll finally receive it. 
And that's an introduction to networking. Thanks for the email and thanks for watching. Bye.